Hey guys, Jason here. I wanted to talk today a little bit about the Elijah generation and what God is doing in the last days because we are living in the last days. I can't tell you the day or the hour that Jesus is coming back. No one knows that but the Father. But we can look at the signs and we can look at the seasons and we know that he is coming back soon. And Jesus said the generation that sees these signs will not pass away until all these things take place. And um, I remember growing up, I used to think, man, I, I wish I could have been uh, one of Jesus' disciples or one of you know the mighty men or lived during that time. But I, I realized that no, like God called me for this time. God called you for this time. This is the greatest time the world will ever know. It's the time that God pours out his spirit where the latter exceeds the former, where the bride makes herself ready. And it is an Elijah generation. And I'll explain what I mean by that. Um, Elijah, when he was born, when the angel was talking to uh, Zacharias, his father, uh, before he was born, he said, hey, your son is going to go in the spirit and the power of Elijah. Not that he's Elijah himself. This isn't reincarnation. He's going in the spirit and the power of Elijah to turn people back unto God. And that's exactly what Elijah did. Um, in uh, Mark 1, it quotes Isaiah the prophet, and it says, um, who John the Baptist is and what John the Baptist says about himself, that he is one in the wilderness preparing ye the way of the Lord, turning people back unto the Father and preaching a baptism of repentance and a forgiveness of sins. And when the um, Pharisees actually ask him like, hey, you know, why are you baptizing? Are you the Messiah? And he goes, no, I'm not. And they say, are you Elijah? And he says, no, I'm not. That's because once again, he's, um, this isn't reincarnated Elijah. This is, um, or Elijah coming down from heaven already. That's probably going to come later, which I'll get into. This is John the Baptist and the spirit and the power of Elijah, just like the angel told Zacharias. And what Elijah did is he prepared the way for Jesus. He preached repentance. He preached forgiveness of sins. And he preached that, hey, there's someone coming after me who's mightier than me. He's going to fill you with the Holy Ghost. And you're going to move in power and demonstration. And he prepared the way for Jesus. And in the same way, that is what God is doing with this generation. He is using a generation to prepare the way for Jesus to come back. And it actually says in Malachi 4, and this is what the Pharisees were thinking when they were asking uh, John the Baptist, are you Elijah? Because they knew the Messiah was around the corner because prophesied the Messiah would show up 483 years after declaration to rebuild parts of Jerusalem. And right on the spot, the Messiah is on the scene exactly as it was prophesied. That's in Daniel 9, I believe, if you want to look at that prophecy. But dead on, the accurate, the accuracy of scripture and of prophecy. And so people were looking for a Messiah. And they knew, well, Elijah is supposed to perceive the, the Messiah. And he did in the spirit and power, the spirit and power of Elijah. But this scripture is really twofold or even threefold, which you'll see in, in scripture all the time. Because God's word is eternal. And when he speaks something, it resounds and it resounds and it resounds and it doesn't stop. And God will often follow patterns and he will do it again. And in Malachi, it says, behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet. Before the great and terrible day of the Lord. Wait, 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 that's that's end time language there. The great and terrible day of the Lord, that's end time language. And I'll get into that in a second. Now, Jesus said, because the disciples asked him this question. Well, didn't Elijah have to precede you? And he told, he told the um, disciples, hey, Elijah is coming. Elijah is coming and will restore all things. And this is in the book of Matthew um, 17, verses 11 and 12. Elijah is coming and will restore all things. Also end time language, the restoration of all things, the restitution of all things. Elijah's coming. But if you recognize it, Elijah already came and they did to him whatever they pleased. And it says, then the disciples realized who's talking about John the Baptist. So John the Baptist did come in the spirit and power of Elijah, but that's the same spirit of faith. The Bible says that Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. The Elijah that called down fire from heaven, yeah, nature like ours. And that having the same spirit of faith, you can believe, therefore you speak, that you can do even greater miracles than Elijah. Jesus said that um, among those born of women, 
There's no one greater than John the Baptist. But we have something available to us that John the Baptist didn't because we're under the new covenant. We now get to be born again, not just born of woman. We're born of the spirit. We get to have the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And that's why Jesus right after that says, in the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. That there's a generation that's called to be an Elijah, that's called to usher in the presence of Almighty God, to bring this nation back to repentance, to move in signs and wonders at a whole different level than has ever been seen, to do the works of Jesus and to be imitators of Christ. And that's you. That's the Elijah generation that... Jesus said, hey, Elijah is coming. He already came. It was John the Baptist, if you recognized it. But there's also going to be a generation of Elijahs that's coming. And Elijah himself, my guess, I don't know this for sure, but my guess is he's probably one of the two witnesses in Revelations 11. And if you're not familiar with that, there's two witnesses that come down from heaven and preach for a period of three and a half years, 1260 days, probably during the seven year um, period of tribulation or whatever. And uh, so they probably do like the first three and a half years. And they do mighty signs and wonders. And they sound like things that Elijah does. They're like fire can come out of their mouths and destroy their enemies. Well, and that could also be the word of God. But like Elijah calls down, you know, fire from heaven and calls down fire and destroys his enemies. It says they'll shut up. They'll have the authority to just shut up the sky and shut up the rain. That's something that Elijah did. Um, it also says they'll be able to turn the waters into blood. That's kind of similar to Moses. And so there's lots of debate over who the, these two witnesses are. My guess is that it's Elijah and it's Enoch, because God's also <laughs> raising up an Enoch generation. And Elijah and Enoch are the only two people in the Bible, um, at least that I've seen, that go straight up to heaven and don't die. And the Bible says it's given all men once to die, and then comes the judgment. So they went straight up by faith, right? Enoch walked with God. He believed God. He was a man full of faith, even before, this is before Mosaic law, right? He was, he was full of faith. That's why the church is an Enoch generation, because it's, it's a generation under a covenant of faith, and that knows how to walk with God. So, and Elijah goes up in a chariot, right? The chariot of fire, when Elisha's standing there watching. So both of them go straight up to heaven. And yet it's given for all men once to die. And then comes the judgment. So my guess is those two witnesses, um, the olive trees there that it talks about, which is also similar to the book of Zechariah, I want to say four, um, who talks about the olive trees and the lampstands. Um, I think it's Elijah. I think it's Enoch because they haven't died yet. They come back. They preach for three and a half years. Then they do die in Jerusalem. The beast kills them. And then three days later, they actually get risen up where God just calls them up and like totally like tons of people end up getting saved and there's an earthquake and like 7,000 die in the earthquake, which is very interesting because that's the same number that did not bow their knee, knee to Baal when Elijah was, when God says, hey, you're not the only one. I've left a remnant, 7,000 have not bowed the knee to Baal. So same number, just interesting. Um, so I think it's, it's probably those two. Elijah probably being a witness to Israel, to things under the old covenant, and Enoch probably being a witness to the church, to the younger brother, because he walked by faith. I mean, they both had faith, but Enoch just believed God and it just overtook him. And he, and he was not because he was just, when you saw him, you saw God. Because that's the kind of covenant and relationship and faith that Enoch had. And so that's, we're living in a time where God is calling us to be an Enoch and an Elijah. We're called to, to usher in the presence of Almighty God. And then God said, in the last days, I'm pouring out my spirit. And that young men would dream dreams um, or old men would dream dreams. Um, I guess I had to write, old men will see visions. Young men will dream dreams that the daughters will prophesy that he will pour out his spirit. That's from Joel chapter three, that there's just a mighty army of God that's called to do the works of God. And, and like Enoch, to bring them in, to, to move in miracles, um, like uh, Elijah and like Enoch did, and to move in that same spirit of faith. Um, just as we have the same spirit of faith that they did, we're under a better covenant based on better promises, and the same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead lives on the inside of you. Enoch actually prophesied about the generation that he would be like him, 
In the book of Jude, it says, And Enoch prophesied that in the last days I will come in many thousands of my holy ones. That's you. Holy ones mean saints. In the last days, God will come in many thousands of his holy ones to turn to the world back to Jesus. You are one of those holy ones that God has called to usher in the greatest revival the world has ever known, and we're seeing it. It's already happening. And it's going to happen. The question isn't, is this going to happen? The question is, will you be part of it? That's the only question. In Brazil, just this week, there was uh, the largest youth convention there's ever been in Brazil. 145,000 youth. The president of Brazil even showed up and said, hey, Brazil belongs to God. And blind eyes were open and deaf ears were open. And there's miracles. You can even look it up and, and see these miracles popping. Like, And this is all over the world. And it's in the United States too. I mean, the, I, on Sunday, I got to pray for someone that was in a wheelchair that hadn't walked in almost a year at a nursing home and watch that girl be full of faith and rise up and walk for the first time in over a year. God is moving as long as you have faith. That's the master key. You have to believe and you have to know his word and know his will because faith only begins where the will of God is known, um, like our awesome pastor always says at Legacy Faith Church. Um, so you gotta know the will of God before you can step out in faith. But there is a generation of Enoch's. There's a generation of Elijah's that's bringing in this awesome and greater revival. And you get to be part of it. You get to be part of this awesome thing. So um, thanks for watching. Uh, next time I'm probably gonna be talking about the army of God, which goes hand in hand with this. I mean, you'll see the, the last days and the pattern of who we're called to be all over. I mean, we're Joshua generation two. We're called to enter into the promised land where the fathers missed it. We didn't miss it. We, we enter in, we take territory. We take everything that's ours. You know, you can see it in Nehemiah where we're, our spirits awakened and we go and we restore and God moves mightily. Like it's, it's all over the place. The pattern of what God is gonna do in these last days. Um, as always, remember to like this video, subscribe to the channel. Um, thank you guys so much for was watching. Go out, be that Elijah, be that Enoch, be Christ. You're called to be an imitator of him. There's no limits except what you put on yourself because God has no limits. So break that down, unbelief, step out of faith. Bless you guys. See you next time.